When you're operating under Part 91, you usually aren't legally bound to follow takeoff minimums, but you should. They're very carefully designed around the departure area of the runway and airport you're using, and they're there to help you avoid terrain on the climb out. You'll find takeoff minimums in the Terminal Procedures publication, the TPP, like this entry for Hotel Victor Romeo in Montana. This airport lists takeoff minimums, and underneath lists a departure procedure. Let's look at each segment of the takeoff minimums, as they're a bit tough to read on these FAA publications. First, it mentions runway 8. The minimums are 300 foot ceilings, that's AGL, and 1 and 3 4 statute mile of visibility. If the weather is below the ceiling or visibility, we're below minimums. But there's an OR after this. It says OR standard. So there's two options. We either need to meet the first weather mins of 300 and 1 and 3 fourths, or we need to have standard mins. But if we use the standard mins, there's a caveat. We need to maintain a minimum climb of 217 feet per nautical mile up to 3300 feet MSL. So let's see if we can diagram out these two options. Since the option with standard minimums has that caveat, and there's no caveat for the 300 and 1 and 3 fourths option, it suggests that standard minimums are less strict. Do you know what they are? For aircraft with one or two engines, it's one mile of visibility. There's no ceiling requirement. The clouds could be right above the deck, but as long as you have the required visibility, you're okay. If you have three or four engines, it's even less strict, so you just need a half a mile visibility. Again, no minimum ceiling. There is another aspect to this which is even less strict, but it really doesn't apply to Part 91 at all. With adequate visual references, you can go down to a quarter mile of visibility. Some commercial air carriers allow for these lower minimums in their operation specifications or op specs if they have adequate visual references, which typically means you can see the runway center line and edge lights in front of you. Some runways are able to go even lower than a quarter mile with certain specified lighting, but that's not the case here. Anyways, this is what standard takeoff mins look like, and they're not listed on the terminal procedures publication above. Again, the caveat to use standard mins is that we have to be able to climb out at the gradient of at least 217 feet per mile. If we can't, this is where the 300 foot ceiling and one and three quarter mile visibility comes in. These other than standard minimums allow us to take off if the weather is at least this good and we can climb out at the normal 200 feet per nautical mile, crossing the departure end of the runway at least 35 feet above it. So what's the takeaway? The FAA has determined that there are obstacles that penetrate the protected climb out area that we'll need to be able to see if we're only climbing at 200 feet per nautical mile, and we'll only be able to see them if we're not in the clouds until 300 feet and have at least 1 and 3 fourth visibility. If the weather doesn't allow for that, we could still depart, but we need to climb out a little more steeply, 214 feet per nautical mile. Again, these aren't typically legal requirements for Part 91, but you're much better off following them. This was just runway 8 though, the TPP didn't mention the other runways at all. Does that mean there's no minimums for those runways? Of course not. They still have standard mins and standard climb gradients associated. So this is what our takeoff minimum diagram looks like. If this looks familiar at all, it's because you've worked with Jeppesen products which list out the takeoff minimums along with other information on either the airport taxiway diagram or a supplemental plate. This makes it easy to see everything at a glance and not have to parse the textual description from the TPP. For more training insights, head over to the website linked here and in the description today.